Hey guys, Greg at Best Choice Trailers. Today we're going to take a walk around a new model from Short Track, the Short Track Pro Series I Beam Frame Dump Trailer. Awesome trailer. We've only had it here for a few hours, but we wanted to make sure we got a video so everybody could see it. I suspect a lot of dealers don't have these in stock yet, but we'll eventually be getting them in. Uh, shown here is a 7 by 14 foot, 17,600 pound GVW low profile dump trailer. So first things first, some people might say, well, how do you get 17,600? Uh, this trailer's got tandem 8K axles, which would generally equal 16,000. On the Pro Series, short track on most models would seem to be adding some tongue weight, which is reasonable. Um, mixed feelings on this, call in if you got questions on tongue weight. But uh, tongue weight you're gonna get no matter what on the truck side, it's going to basically generally be about 15% in a bumper. On this, they've counted uh, some of that tongue weight in 1600 pounds so again on uh, 8ks they're counting 1600 on this tandem 7ks instead of rating them at 14 you're going to find they're at 15,400 pounds so let's get into this we'll show you we've walked around this a couple times and i found about 15 differences the first time and then we found some more i think total we're close to 20 differences between this and what i'll call the normal uh short track models now let me look at the weight sticker kind of start there and kind of the the proof is in the pudding here on the what is different about these so 17.6 gvw 12.6 payload that means this trailer weighs basically 5,000 pounds historically short tracks always been a little bit lighter in some of our other brands but oddly enough seem to hold up just as good if not most times better uh, just proper engineering, attention to detail, looking at any problems they've ever had and fixing them and just making everything better. Um, so it's, it's kind of uh, unusual for short track to be, I'll say the heavyweight, but on this pro series, they most certainly would be, um, probably as heavy as anything we're going to have. Uh, the 14,000 or the 15, 4,000, 15,400 pound models, I believe they were coming in about. 4,500 pounds, give or take, on the 14-footers. Uh, comparison to the old models, uh, the 14,000-pound short tracks were coming in about 36 to 3,800 pounds. So we're picking up probably a good six, seven, eight, nine hundred pounds on average on this model. And we'll show you where all that weight's going uh, with all the additional things they've added to these. So up front, we've got a heavy faceplate coupler. It's got a four-bolt coupler instead of the traditional two-bolt. Uh, these seem to be coming through with a pinnel, but we also keep two and five sixteenth couplers in stock should you need a ball coupler. Uh, old style had the tube frame, so it was a stacked tube frame. These are going to be 8-inch I-beam. I believe 7K axles, I think the spec was 13 foot-pound on the 8s. I think it was going to be a 15. Um, but I-beam frame basically continuous front to back on these. Um, where the old stack frame, basically you had a tongue that came to your hangers and then basically you had a main frame that ran the length of the trailer. So it's an I-beam continuous throughout. Sealed seven pin harness. It is a RV blade style plug. Now one nice thing, the colors show basically where your functions are, which is nice. The industry is starting to see that. You've got a plug holder for it. Short track upgraded to the 12K jack instead of the 7s on probably two years ago on the 14K plus models. Now on the Pro Series, they're also adding a two-speed jack mechanism, which is nice. You see that more on your maybe bigger goosenecks or semi-style jacks. You'll see two-speed upgrades. Uh, Monster Toolbox, exclusive to the Pro Series. Uh, there's a few other manufacturers in the industry now kind of doing something kind of similar. Uh, Monster Box. Got grease zerts in the back there for some serviceability. Gas shocks on either side sure make it nice. Uh, they added a light for some nighttime functionality. Uh, huge front compartment. Um, you wouldn't really need to carry hydraulic fluid because it's a power up gravity down. Theoretically, there's really no way to lose fluid on this. Uh, unlike a, maybe a power up power down with a dead battery situation, you could lose some hydraulic fluid. So probably not a need for hydraulic fluid, but certainly big enough for probably a chainsaw and bars or whatever stuff you need to carry um, uh, in here, straps, binders, whatever you need to put in. There's also some room back here. It looks like there's a couple uh, bungee cords standard equipped. 
Uh, this is a power up gravity down on the telescopics. I don't know how many quart that reservoir is. It's a, it's a big boy. Um, speaking of the reservoir being a big boy, uh, that is because you've got a big boy cylinder on this as well. Short track, typically 12 and 14 footers was using, a, I believe a 108 cylinder and then 120s on 16 footers. Looks like on all the pro series, you're going to get a 120 stroke upgrade as standard equipment, which just means you're going to get uh, some more uh, angle, uh, lift angle standard with these. So again, lots of room in that toolbox. It is a two button up down remote. We may have some four buttons coming in with hydraulic jacks uh, on some of these. Uh, one other thing that is, is kind of smart besides just the battery being fully contained, no, uh, no have to worry about, you know, arcing on if you put straps in here on, on your battery and whatnot, but they've kind of hidden the, uh, 110 volt charger in the rear of the box, which is neat. That's where you'd basically plug in and then your actual maintainer is back in the rear corner. So nothing's going to be hitting it, et cetera. Super smart design. Uh, they've also, uh, Put a manual on here being that this is gravity it's not theoretically hydraulically locked in place if you had a big enough piece of equipment it could want to tilt so you've got a manual safety up front if you're going to load heavier equipment uh reinforced where your i-beam comes around up front nice the way uh, it's got a bullet led powder coated tough it is a powder coated trailer typical short track any seams you've got are all going to be sealed to help keep any salt and acid rain etc out of those joints you've got some stake pocket tie downs uh additional features for the pro series not found on the standard would be your sail bar so basically sail bar is super nice goes one side to the other simply walk it back to the back of the trailer hook it in your hooks and you are done uh, i got a couple bungees in the toolbox you can bungee those down to the sides which are another uh, another piece that's going to be different on this model. Uh, side steps, another difference. It is larger and has your punch plate on it. Slick design on that. Uh, we've noticed that your stake pockets are substantially heavier. I'd say at least probably two gauges heavier um, on your stakes. You've got on a 14 footer four going down the sides. I think the old style, you had three, I believe. Top rail on this is also uh, heavier. This is a two by three tube top rail uh, where before it was formed, you would come up out and down. This is all boxed in, super strong top rail. Uh, still five stake, uh, five D rings, I'm sorry, in the bed standard equipment, four corners, and then you've got one up front. Uh, on this I-beam, I'll, I'll put it up in a second, but it actually sits a little lower than usual. This one, I believe we measured around 27 and a half inches. Uh, the old style, I believe, was 29, so we dropped about an inch and a half on this. Um, and part of that is how the bed frame nestles. We'll show you that in a second. In the old style, you basically had a tongue, a main frame, and then the bed set on top of that. This, you've got a mono I-beam, and then the bed, there is no frame here. The frame actually sits inside the I-beam, and we'll show you. But that's how it's getting down lower to the ground, and the beauty of it is it still has straight axles typically if a trailer sat lower you had drop axles which basically put your axle tubes lower to the ground and could create ground clearance issues nice part about this you've still got straight axles which gives you plenty of ground clearance um, just an optimal way to do it a little bit more work doing a nestled frame but makes for a nicer job overall uh, this does have 8K axles, which is going to go, instead of having like a lot of the industry does with 16-inch 14-ply rubber, this has 17.5-16 ply. Besides being much heavier rubber that's actually rated almost 5,000 pounds a tire, it also takes you to a much heavier wheel. If you look, that is much thicker than your traditional 10-ply wheel, 10-ply 16-inch tire wheel which would be the same wheel you're going to get basically on the 14 ply a lot of the industry uses a lot heavier wheel a lot heavier rubber short track on this also goes to a aluminum valcrum cap instead of the plastic cap that you would generally get uh, much tougher i have yet to have somebody break one i'm sure somebody somehow has figured out a way but i have not met that individual yet plastic caps were fairly easy to crack in a landfill or if you uh mudded your tires or whatnot Slipper spring suspension also has a wet bolt um, kit on it. So you've got some serviceability 
uh, to those slipper springs. Uh, one other thing that we believe to be a difference and we're waiting for confirmation, that sideway, that keyway adds a lot of strength. Short track standard uh, dump trailers, 11 gauge, that sure feels like 10 to us. So I believe the sidewall on this is also heavier in addition to everything else, which speaking of being heavier, standard on short tracks, normal dumps is seven, I'm sorry, 10. This pro series model is seven gauge. Seven gauge would be 3 16th, 10 gauge would be 1 8th of an inch. So you're talking a 16th thicker, roughly 50% or about 2.5 pounds per square foot. Seven by 14 foot dump is gonna be 98. 98 times roughly 2.5 pounds per foot, you're gonna add probably just shy of 250 pounds in the floor of this dump trailer alone. That's just the added weight in the floor. So again, when we said this is a heavyweight dump, it's not just any one thing. It's not just a reinforced floor. Short Track's done a great job at reinforcing this whole trailer. Let me show you another thing. This hinge is much substantially heavier than what was on the old one. It is reinforced inside out and it's boxed in at the top. It's also got a grease zert on it. I like what they did. That's one of the things that we really like about Short Track. They don't just have one item that's five ton rated, one that's seven, one that's 10. They do a good job at making sure everything's uniform. So if you get a heavier duty abusive user, they really got to work to break stuff. And by the time they broke it, you can pretty well figure the dump uh, failed only because it was well past what it should have been, should have been doing. Uh, gate on this, boxed out top, bottom. Uh, heavier all the way around all four sides and then it also has an auto latch mechanism we'll show you that in a bit of course grease zerts all the way around you've got a retainer pin for the door when in use you've got a spreader uh, this is pretty slick they actually did this so it's it's virtually impossible to come out um, so your spreader gate is standard equipped uh, one thing that is new that is a standard feature is a rear stabilizer jack. I caught it because I need to put it back in to get this dump bed up here in a second, but it's two by two tube, not one by two. It's also a much heavier gauge. I don't know what it is, but I can see it's clearly thicker. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, rear stabilizer jacks are standard on this. Uh, the standard dumps are prepped for it, but that is not standard equipment. Another cool feature on this, this model, the Pro Series, has uh, a rear bumper. None of the other short tracks have, which some aspects of not having a bumper I actually like. One thing I do really like is this license plate mounts all the way to the rear. A lot of times they mount about four foot, three foot underneath, and you can't hardly see them. DOT is really going to like that. Um, don't know that that helps the average customer, but it will. DOT will certainly like being able to see the plate and having your lights over it. Uh, one of the benefits of having a bumper too would be you can have a, it just looks, I guess, more finished. Uh, the old style I actually like because it was very functional. Uh, the only thing we found with other manufacturers are a lot of times when they do these holders, they don't put grease zerts on these for serviceability and they seize up if you're not real careful. They have put zerts on these, which are nice, but I would simply say as a customer, you buy this trailer, make sure these get grease. Um, even with grease, they can, uh, seize up some, but certainly last a lot longer than the ones that just, uh, cap them at both ends and, you know, no great way to service them. Ramps are underneath as usual with short track. We did notice, and I'll try to show you when we put the bed up, it's a four inch ramp as opposed to a three inch ramp. So even the ramps got heavier on this. Try to show you this gate functionality while we're back here. So if you watch, this is going to basically self-latch. Pretty cool. And you can even do it with one and a half hands. One thing we sure appreciate on Short Track, everything seems to fit right out of the gate. Very little... Uh, very little shimming and lubing, etc. Stuff that seems to work. Again, 
got the hinge on there notice it's ready to go You've got your hooks for your tarp bungees stakes i don't believe i mentioned the front and rear bulkhead that feature has also carried over uh from the standard model which is nice a lot of folks like that and then you've got the reinforcement protection not sure if i mentioned that earlier but that's a nice detail if you got a payloader that's loading from the top it's not coming straight down on that tarp it wasn't a big problem we had but some people i guess have asked about it so they went ahead and i'll say solved it or fixed it or whatnot on this model so let's go ahead and get the uh get the bed up on this so i want to show you this is the nestled bed frame i was referring to you'll notice on this the bed frame sits inside the i-beam that's what allows you to get down even lower than normal telescopic hoist is a three stage we are in stage one about to hit stage two It'll get a little quicker. There you go. A little louder. And it'll do that till we get to stage three. Ramps are under mount. One of the other things that we notice that is different, these are structural channel cross members, not fabricated cross members. I don't have a preference. I think, um, I think from a strength standpoint, they're probably fairly similar. But these are a structural channel heavyweight. It's got that 120 stroke telly I was saying about. Two foot sides are standard on this. I guess I'll point that out because some manufacturers are doing a 20 inch side. We've seen, I've even seen some do an 18, but 20 is uh, pretty normal. A couple other details we like. This bed frame's a little heavier. Uh, it's a five inch heavy wall instead of a four. Uh, one thing Short Track does, it's nice on the end of the ramps. This is half inch plate. We've had manufacturers and actually still see and take trade ins. A manufacturer do that out of quarter. Quarter over time is going to bend. That's your retainer. It's going to uh, hook on the back of that hook bar. And again, ramps on these are four inch, not three inch. Want to show you as well, Short Track on 8K axles is going to use a full size 8K drum assembly. What I mean, there's non-SAE 8Ks or hybrid 8Ks or different manufacturers will call them different. This is a real 8K axle. What I mean by that, you're getting a 3 and 3 8 by 12 and a quarter inch um, brake assembly, not the hybrids that are going to be a 2 and a half. Meaning this is the same size brake that's going to be on a tandem dual 10,000 pound axle. The hybrid axles you're losing, you're down to 2 and a half, not 3 and 3 eighths. So you're losing about 30% or better of your braking they're using full-size drums this is not what everybody's putting on wanted to point that out you can tell that it's a three and three eighths because it's going to stick out about an inch or so past um past the tire on those big difference a lot of manufacturers are not using full-size 8ks you need to ask whoever's selling it to you uh and they may not even know what they're actually putting on it Good luck with it up in the air. I don't know the degree of angle on this. I'm guessing it's gonna be probably close 50 degrees. Looks like I'm a little bit high in the front, so it looks pretty close at the back, but I'm probably off by two, three inches, it looks like on this. Telly hoist, let me go ahead and put it down. It is gonna be gravity down, as would be your tellies. Stage one's pretty quick. Stage two, it's gonna slow down a little bit. Stage three, it'll slow down even more. Uh, what we find net is, it's about the same speed as dual piston and scissor, but I guess at the end of the day, who cares if it takes 20 seconds more or less time? At the end of the day, what most guys are gonna care about is that it dumped the load or was I shoveling it by hand? And a telly is super uber efficient. It is three stage, not one. It's front mounted, not under mount. It's not trying to redirect force. It's already pointed vertical, not horizontal. It's just hard to beat. It's also going to save a little bit of power on gravity down instead of power down. Uh, what we found historically net with a lot of our commercial customers, if they've got a working charge line, uh, like trucks all should have, I say should because not everyone that comes in here does, 
uh, a lot of times they're gonna get most all the power they need just off the truck side. So basically you've got your mains going to your pump and then um, you've got uh, one going to your 110 volt charger here. This is gonna basically be what's gonna get charged off your truck. That's a 3.7 amp hour charge. With how efficient a telly is, it's basically 100% efficient as opposed to a dual piston that's about 40 and a scissor that's about 60. Uh, a lot of times that little blue wire, that little trickle charge off the truck uh, may, and I say makes, it's gonna really depend on how often you're dumping and how much driving and how big the trailer is and how heavy it is front heavy and how heavy the total load is, whether it's you know mulch or, or dirt. That little charge line may actually, with how efficient this hoist is, um, it may keep up. A lot of commercial guys, it does. It just depends what they're hauling. If it doesn't, that's what we said this here is for. That's your 110 volt charger that you can plug in with an extension cord to your house current. Uh, I believe most of these from Shore Track are going to be a two amp hour. Um, this is a larger battery, which I guess I'm glad I took that cover off. Looks like they're using a group 31 deep cycle as opposed to a traditional group 24. Group 24 deep cycle would be a 140. This one, if you can see there, is a 180. So you've got another, I don't know, 30% or better battery capacity. Now what that means is with a two amp hour charger and a 180 amp hour battery, uh, that battery should take close to 90 amp hours to fully charge uh, if it's ever completely discharged. So again, little details to know. We can talk about that more over the phone. So if you have questions, feel free, give us a shout. We'll go over them. We are bringing these in in gooseneck and bumper pull models, 14 and 16 foot, and with 7K and 8K axles. And then they also are offering this with 10K super singles as well, which would be a 22,000 pound rated. Uh, no triple axles on these. It's either sevens, eights, or super single 10K axles. Uh, there are traditional options available. I believe on these we can get high sides. Haven't seen one yet, but I believe that's available. Uh, hydraulic jack will probably be a semi-common upgrade. I believe on these we can still get the normal colors. Uh, probably a spare tire or wireless remote would be two of the only features that you could really option in at this point on this model. Sorry for how long the video is. A lot to cover on this. A lot, uh, lot of added features on the Short Track Pro Series dump. Feel free to give us a shout. 717-220-4220. Or you can visit us on the web at bestchoicetrailers.com. Thanks for looking.